So moving to the next agenda point, because what we haven't discussed yet is actually what are scams? Um, scams are weird in the sense it's the only crime you can fall for. And as Natalie was already saying, and uh, Yella, if you wouldn't mind making a picture of Natalie, uh, <laughs> we will not share it on social, but it's for my personal remembrance. <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry. Um, Scams are weird. In a sense, it's the only crime uh, we can fall for. And it, that makes this crime di uh, difficult because we are all, uh, when we fall for a scam, we feel ashamed. We feel stupid. We feel we've missed something. Um, if I want to uh, do a definition, and, and Jack, uh, I stole some of your research uh, of the formal definition that online fraud is characterized by the use of deception for financial gain, which is absolutely true, but also quite scientific. Um, and I personally like, the, the, uh, if I have to explain to somebody what a scam is, it's, it's a huge gap between the product or service which is promised to you and what you get. And of course, in many cases with scams, you don't get anything, you, you lose only. But we see also, especially in online shopping scams, uh, people uh, getting a product which is in no relationship to the actual product being ordered or getting a subscription service which is in no relationship to what you could expect. And we consider those scams as well. We see scams as actually the third wave of cybercrime hitting consumers. I mean, we all had uh, the, the huge challenge with, with, anti, with viruses in, in the late 80s, the, the 90s. And I think we have some control over it now. We're, we will never be there, uh, but we are much more in control than we were in the 80s and 90s. Same with phishing. I mean, I'm very happy that APWG is here because they have been fighting fishing uh, for, for more than 20 years. And for, I'm not afraid that you will ever uh, lose your job because it will, will always be with us. But now we are hitting the third wave of scams. And where there's a difference between phishing and scams is that phishing usually entails a brand being misused. You get a, an email from Amazon, you get an email from DHL, a message uh, 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 from your bank, and you believe that you're actually talking to them where online scams is, I think, a slightly broader definition because it also includes romance scams, cryptocurrency scams, where you are investing or investing in somebody you think you love and then uh, he or she scams you. So I would like to ask you to, to raise your hands and maybe we can also do the online voting, asking people uh, who, who got scammed in the last two years. Just raise your hands where you're completely anonymous. I at least see one hand. Berend, thank you very much for being anonymous. Um, <laughs> no, but um, uh, when I ask this question in the room, this is often the answer again. Nobody raises his hand uh, because uh, it, it's difficult to admit. And I don't know, can we see the statistics online? Can we stop the votes? Ah, so, so people are still voting. So we have now uh, about 38% of the people online saying, yes, I've been scammed. And uh, if we could scroll a little bit down, Francesco, we can see okay, the amount being lost. So most uh, are losing something between a zero and 100 euros, 82%, but some people lost, lost a lot more. Um, and that's interesting. I mean, in the room, nobody got scammed apart from one homeless person. Uh, <laughs> and uh, virtually uh, we have uh, now 39% saying, yes, I've been scammed. Thank you very much, uh, Francesco. Um, so everybody can get scammed. Uh, recently, I talked to the uh, chief security office, uh, officer of one of the biggest uh, cybersecurity companies in the world. And he admitted that uh, uh, two weeks ago, he, he, he got a, uh, a text message from his CEO asking him to, to send a gift card because uh, the CEO was speaking to, uh, um, uh, uh, to a, a partner and she wanted to give him a gift. Uh, and he sent, uh, he quickly ordered a Amazon gift card, sent it to the CEO, and he only got suspicious when immediately he got a next message asking for, can you now send a Google uh, gift card code as well? So it can happen to even the people who are 100% dedicated to fighting cyber crimes. And the reason we all are being scammed continuously is because we continuously are getting messages. We're being approached by Facebook, by uh, Telegram, WhatsApp, email, um, Everybody is continuously contacting us, uh, uh, is continuously trying to contact us to, to get scammed. And it's no longer a 
Western problem. It has become a global epidemic. With the rise of Corona, many countries, uh, many developing countries started to, to go online. Uh, millions of people very, uh, yeah, uh, not experienced with the internet. And we now see a massive rise of online scams also in developing countries like Ghana, Egypt, India, uh, Pakistan, uh, Brazil. So scams are now no longer a local disease, they're a global pandemic. A few trends. One of the trends we saw is that in the past, and, and these are figures from the Federal Trade Commission, um, is that uh, elderly used to be the most targeted and they were also losing the most money because they were targeted often with investment scams, trying to get the entire pension uh, being, uh, being scammed. Recently, we saw a change there. We see that younger people are being scammed more and more, and they're actually losing also quite a lot of money. And it's not only a, a trend we see in the United States, we also see it in, in Finland, in, in Thailand, in the Netherlands, in China. In China, it's even that bad that uh, the Chinese government decided to uh, really force students uh, from colleges and universities to take a anti-scam awareness training because there's so much be, uh, people are being scammed, especially in investment opportunities. One of the biggest challenges I think we as a group have is that consumers are convinced that they're good at recognizing scams. We did a survey amongst 5,000 consumers and 76% felt that, yes, I can, I'm quite confident or even very confident that I can recognize scams. The next question, of course, we ask is, okay, were you scammed? And 73% admitted, yes, we've been, I've been scammed in the past. So there's a big gap between the level of confidence people are feeling and the actual scam awareness, scam alertness of the consumer. What types of scams are there out there? Well, um, in many cases, I mean, scams have been around forever. Uh, even before the Romans, uh, uh, we've been scammed. But it's often the same wine in new bags or bottles, whatever you prefer. Um, but the, the scam is always the same, but the media is differing. And the palette of scams we're now being confronted with is continuously increasing. Some, of course, sometimes victims might have been able to know better. I mean, this is a, a, a scam which was posted, uh, I think, a week ago. Um, and of course, for the Japanese lady who is 65, it's a terrible event. Um, and she was scammed by a scammer who pretended to be an astronaut being stuck in space and he needed money to get back to Earth. Um, so yes, sometimes we might have been, uh, should be able to know better. Um, I want to ask a few questions. I mean, the most common scam searched on, on scamadvisor.com are online shopping scams, scam, uh, shops which are not delivering goods or are selling fakes. And I want to ask the audience, and also please feel free to add it in the chat, which uh, these ads, what do they have in common? Uh, please raise your hand if you have an idea what they have in common. Yes, please. It's too cheap. It's too good to be true. Very good. What's the second uh, thing they have alike? Yes, please. Could you, sorry, could you yell? <laughs> it's under 100 euros, actually very good, but uh, I didn't uh, see that myself, so thank you very much. Um, no, the only other thing they have in common, um, sorry, Francesco, can you click for me? Yeah, yeah I got it. Uh, they're on Facebook. Um, and that's one of the challenges all the big tech companies currently face is the massive use of their platforms by scammers. Um, sorry, yeah, Francesco, the clicker is not working. Yeah, now it does again. Um, so apart from online shopping scams, the other kind of scam we see are cryptocurrency scams and investment scams. And these are growing at a phenomenal rate. And uh, they're not all uh, the obvious one offering you 5% return on investment per week. And they're not that obvious. We see a lot of uh, investment scams, which are actually quite, quite good if you look at it from a marketing perspective. So uh, a year ago, uh, the Squid Game uh, series was very popular on Netflix. And uh, a scammer launched a cryptocurrency call, a coin called uh, the Squid, which you could use in a game which would be coming out very soon. And within five days, he was able to collect $3.4 million before the website was taken down because uh, Netflix and Squid Games had nothing to do with it. Um, and we see that actually scammers, and you have to give them something, there are excellent marketeers. They are using the annual events. I mean, we all are already preparing for the Black Friday scams, the Christmas scams. Uh, they're using any crisis. I mean, many of you would have received an email saying, hey, I want to donate to the Ukraine. Uh, please click on this link. Or 
I am in the Ukraine, I need money, can you please send money to this cryptocurrency wallet? Um, they're using any crisis, it might be bushfire, it might be a war, uh, of course, the corona epidemic, and they're using any trend. Um, and to my amazement, uh, we even got emails saying, uh, if you would like to join the funeral of uh, Queen Elizabeth, uh, please click here. Uh, the tickets are 1,000 uh, per person. Um, so uh, uh, you can prepare, of course, the next crisis. Scammers are the first one to use it. And some of those scams are really vicious. I mean, uh, we've seen the changes in legislation in Texas regarding abortion. And three months before the legislation came into effect, we already saw the first websites popping up offering abortion pills, targeting especially young women in Texas. And it doesn't stop by these uh, young women ordering and never getting the product. Um, no, next they get an email, hey, we know what you ordered, uh, we want more money, otherwise we're going to tell your family and friends. So that's how scammers operate. So one of the questions we ask us every year is how big are online scams? And as I said before, Every year we uh, correspond with 48 different countries, asking them how much money has been lost, how many reports did you receive, and which actions are you undertaking to combat scams? So as I said before, 50, uh, nearly 55, uh, uh, $55 billion being lost, nearly 300 million reports, and growing very rapidly. And what's interesting is to see at the moment is that actually the amount being lost is growing much more rapidly than the number of reports because of investment scams. We can see that very clearly in the graph uh, here from the Federal Trade Commission, where you can see how quickly investment scams are growing. But it's not only the USA, it's also Canada, Turkey, and many other countries. And Turkey uh, having to be forced to close down an exchange and two, uh, uh, two billion being lost just by being forced to close that exchange. And it's only the tip of the iceberg because depending on the country between free and 20% of all scams are actually reported. Uh, the global average we estimate to be about 7%. So we only see about 7% of the entire problem. What we also see, and I already uh, shared with you before, is social, uh, social media platforms are especially targeted at the moment. Uh, many countries are now reporting that, yes, next to email and, and messaging, we now see that uh, Facebook, uh, TikTok, Instagram, they're all being misused by scammers to launch the scam and to lure people to a website or to a one-to-one -one, uh, message uh, messenger. What we also see is that scammers are going professional. Um, uh, uh, Jim Browning will this afternoon present about the, the tech scam, the tech support scams from India, as, as many of you know. But it doesn't stop there. We now see that people are being lured to a different country and being uh, put in working camps their IDs being taken from them and be, they're being forced to work as a scammer, unable to leave the compound uh, and, and even being beaten if they don't cooperate. We also see that scams are being offered as a service. Uh, for 90 bucks, you can buy a very professional looking investment website, which uh, nearly nobody can tell apart from a real investment site and launch it. And there we see cyber criminals specializing in, in fake reviews or money laundering or setting up uh, specific types of, of scams. My biggest concern is that scams are becoming unrecognizable. We all are familiar with the emails where we're being promised $1 billion. We just have to send our credit card details to get the money. Those are easy. We now see that scammers are professionalizing and launching websites such as the Financial Control Service of Granada. It took me an hour to find out that this is very, 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 very likely a scam. Uh, but it, the website is incredible boring, very governmental. Um, the only thing which triggered me is uh, they launched press releases saying that uh, we recovered your money. And uh, they are sending one-to-one -one messages to people who are already on the, I'm sorry to say, the donkey list on the, the dark web. Their, their data is being shared and their approach that uh, uh, we are, were able to recover your money. Can you please fill out this form? And then once they have given all their private information, they of course first have to pay an administration fee to get their money back. And after the administration fee, there's an insurance fee, a custom fee. You never get your money back. Very professional. And of course, we also see the rise of deep fakes. We already see that it's now very easy and for everybody to do is to create a photo of a person who doesn't exist. And they're used especially by romantic dating scammers to trick people. 
we see uh, deep voices being used. So you believe that your son or your daughter or your mother is calling you, but it's actually auto, uh, generated uh, by a machine. And finally, of course, the deep videos, we're already seeing the first sign of those. I would not be surprised if a large company is going to be scanned very soon because the CEO in a video call said, can you wire a few million euros to this account? Scammers are winning uh, at the moment and um, uh, law enforcement has a big challenge. These are figures from the UK where we see the number of law enforcement officers being focused on online fraud. And as you see, it's rather flat while the number of scams has been growing very rapidly. Same in the Netherlands, uh, the Dutch law enforcement is at the moment being forced to, to say to scam victims that, sorry, we, we, we cannot take your case further because the chances of actually us getting the criminal are so small that it's not worth the effort, which is of course very difficult for the scam victim, but also very understandable for law enforcement to do. They have to make choices at the moment. So how can we turn the tide? That's the mission for today and tomorrow. Um, of course, there are many actions we're already doing. We are making consumers more aware of scams, but recent research actually says that it's always good to build scam awareness, but it doesn't help you to decrease victimizations. The scammers are getting smarter, but also people who did their scam awareness training feel that they're more confident and as a result are taking more risks. And finally, of course, the scammers are very entrepreneurial and it, it becomes very, very difficult for a normal consumer to actually recognize scams. We also have KYC processes. So Jacob from the Danish registry will share what he did with the .dk domain this afternoon. And I think it's a great initiative to enforce KYC processes if you do something on the internet. But it's not the only solution. It's not the silver bullet because there are organizations which make it very easy to register a company. For 12 pounds, you can launch your company and people have the idea, okay, it's an official company based in the US or in the UK or another country. It must be reliable, but unfortunately it's not. Countries are of course fighting back and many actions are being taken by different countries and many are making reporting easier or Ireland is asking, uh, is working very closely together with the national press to every week launch a campaign around a new kind of scam. We see Taiwan opening up all its data to also commercial companies to help them fight scammers better. Um, uh, uh, the Chinese government launched an app and they now have 5 million, uh, 5 million, 500 million people in China using that app to be a little bit more safe regarding scams. So there's many innovations, but they're all on the national level. And I think we need to take the next step. So that's the goal of the next two days. Define not only share data, share knowledge, but also define concrete solutions together, both online as well as, uh, as in this room. And we're going to do that by examining the different actors. We have the scammer, we have the victim, we have law enforcement, and of course the companies which make the internet possible, for which I think we also should be very grateful. Um, I would like to challenge you to examine the process each actor goes through. I mean, the, the scammer, of course, uh, what are the root causes that he is scamming? And poverty might be one of them. And we're not going to solve global poverty, but we might be able to take other actions. The consumer, how can we help him in this orientation process in when he selects it, when he buys for it? How can we support law enforcement better? Which tools need to be available for them? And finally, for the internet service providers, the social media, the hosters, the registrars, the payment uh, uh, facilitators, how can we support them? So there are many ideas already uh, uh, sent to, to us in, in the past. And uh, uh, I would like to challenge you to today Add, to, add your ideas to it. You can do that uh, uh, online. You can also do it here. Um, already have a lot of ideas. Um, so online, you can share your ideas, but also on your mobile app by going to bit.ly slash scam solution. And maybe Max, you can put it in the, in the chat as well. Um, if you click on it, you will see the same mind map uh, of ideas. And you can fill in the form to launch your idea. Um, so if you have any any ideas, please do share them. The more solutions, the better. Um, uh, it will take some time to get your idea on the board because we do monitor, uh, we do have to monitor, but please send us all your ideas. Also, I would like to ask you to nominate the Scam Fighter of the Year. We have done that now for uh, two years. The goal of the Scam Fighting Awards is to really thank a lot of people who are doing great work. You can vote for an organization or you can 
vote for a person. And uh, at the end of this year, we will have an independent jury selecting the scam fighter organization and person of the year to get again more media attention to the importance of, of fighting scams. With that, I would like to conclude my presentation. Uh, I really hope you will enjoy uh, uh, the summit. And I would like to clear, give the floor to our next two uh, supporting organizations, APWG and the Global Cyber Alliance, who have been supporting us for the last three years. So Foy and Sor Soriana, if I may give the floor to you, thank you very much.